Mem has been so focused on CSJ training for the past nine years. And then we just finished an international academic research conference on CSJ when COVID-19 happened. So all of our planned activities, events were on a halt. It was a depressing time, a tragic time for many of us, but it was also a time to look at what is happening in the world. So aside from the pandemic, there was a massive infodemic. Some of us kind of felt like, hey, what are we doing? Why are we not acting on this information crisis that's happening on social media? And realize we cannot solely focus on conflict sensitivity in the academe, in our existing collective, because there is a bigger problem out there. Then, pagbalik, there was a sort of a revival. We revisited the Constitution and Bylaws. Parang hindi na, hindi na rin ulit siya functional. Kasi nagbago na, hindi na siya conflict-sensitive journalism lang. Kasi hindi naman lahat nagtuturo ng journalism. Any form of communication should be part of that. So how can MEM help? So that it's the time when we had a very productive strategic planning in December 2022. And by January 2023, we opened membership to all the media and communication teachers in Mindanao and even outsiders. No, kasi gusto namin makareach out dun sa mga bang tao who have a different perception about Mindanao too. We also want to educate them. I think coming in after the pandemic, we like to start a new and come up with more in-person activities and really in hopes of growing our members. So we just had our very first CSJC training. How is this different from the CSJ training that we have? Well, the C means communication. My motivation in joining this um, seminar workshop on CSJC is basically I want to mold students that are conflict-sensitive journalists and I want to contribute to peace. Because before, it was focused on journalism. But this time, we're adding communication because we're taking into consideration social media. Social media blurs the line between truth and fallacy. Especially in the context of the classroom and learning communication, we are actually using social media almost all the time. We're taking into consideration corporate communication. And then eventually, we see that the conflict analysis tools can be applied also not only for journalism, but also for organizational development. We're putting in development communication. In peace building, CSJ is really important because when you tell the stories of the people that you work with, you have to be sensitive, you know, how you present them to, to the public. And all other forms of communication, we believe, magagamita ng conflict sensitivity framework. In CSJ framework, we have established that conflict is really part of life. And in looking at conflict, understanding conflict, we see that communication is like a primary factor in terms of conflict. And that's part of the evolution why we introduced CSJC. In terms of the issues that are now happening in, in the Philippines, no? like disinformation and misinformation, and also the polarization of different sides on different topics, no? especially on political issues. It's really necessary uh, there are journalists, there are media practitioners that are bringing in alternative perspectives. From that perspective, we see that MEM, although involved primarily with CSJ in understanding conflict in Mindanao, we see that there are things or field that we should not disregard or we should not ignore. Typically, okay, when you're a teacher from Davao, we've had years of being in a political climate where you do not question the authority. But when I started to understand how conflict is supported by systems, by dynasties, and it does not sit well with the new values that I have developed through CSJ, it really became an eye-opener. But that does not happen to all teachers right away. So, you know, Mahira, because even in our group, there are teachers who don't share the same political leanings. But what's great about the framework, we are able to dialogue and to communicate with each other without actually having to hate each other. <laughs> and that makes for a healthy discourse 
because at the end of the day, we're educators. And our job is to help our students do critical thinking. After going through a lot of conflicts and sensitivity sessions under forum CFD and, and CSJ is one of those. Siguro sa edad ko na rin, parang together nagmelo yung pananaw ko, nagmelo yung attitude ko, pati behavior. Nagiging ibang tao ako this time, no? Parang ang dami kong pwedeng i ano tawag dito? ma-compromise sa mga bagay-bagay na hindi ko ginagawa noon. Isang bagay lang hindi ko pwedeng i-compromise, yung quality ng output. Other things, yung mga submission, marinig ko lang na as long as ano naman siya, yung reasonable, mas nakikinig ako this time. No? Mas sensitive ako sa pangangailangan nila. There are many organizations already doing this advocacy, but we were in a very strategic position being in Mindanao because there's a big gap in Mindanao. Ang daming teachers dito, ang daming hindi trained. So, MEM found that opportunity to provide those trainings. Media literacy, film literacy, fact-checking, lahat yan. Last Mindanao Week of Peace, we brought in two films from the collection of the long reach of short films produced by Forum ZFD. So these films were under the canopy of light by Teng Mangansakan and Panipupan by Bagani Fayola. These short films elicited actually very remarkable emotions from the audience. Through the films that I've been shown, I can see that there can be change, there can be hope. So given the framework itself, it has given me a different approach on how I call myself to action. It gives a more sensitive narration of how Muslims or Moros, indigenous people and Christians live in harmony. Because that's something that hasn't been the narrative for years. MEM was formed, it became an organized network. We are now teaching the fourth batch of teachers on CSJ. You can really see that so many milestones have been reached.